Okay, everybody. Um, I thought I would do another one of the uh, commentaries here for uh, the uh, crossover I did with Lewis here. And uh, he's with us here on the line. I'm not. <laughs> 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 love how you're wearing the black lantern shirt too yeah i know i got that just i, I got that so perfect didn't i um <laughs> all right well uh oh have we already started it i figured we have i oh I no started. i just started recording i didn't start playing yet oh whoops sorry oh, okay I'll, was... I'll, I'll i'll uh roll back <laughs> live here um i just wanted to give people a little bit quick background on uh on it um I'd found the JLA thing a while back, and I'd mentioned it. Wait, no, I found it a while back, and I mentioned it to you. You did. Uh, a fan had sent it to me along with the uh, uh, that stupid live action late seventies thing, uh, the Justice League series that had yes. uh, uh, the the challenge of the superheroes, whatever that was. Yeah, it was like a variety show or something. Yeah, this weird ass variety show that had like. Uh, uh, Adam West and Burt Ward st- yeah. reprising Batman and Robin, but the whole thing was like kind of a comedy, but kind of not. It was that one step down the re- uh, down the ladder, that one rung down approaching Scooby Doo. <laughs> so this we saw this, and it was so baffling, and I wanted to do a review of it, but I I really thought that if I was going to do it with somebody, it would have to be have to be you because otherwise it just it wouldn't work right. <laughs> that and, oh shucks. That and there are a lot of jokes in here. I don't think anyone really caught because they don't read the comics. But um, all right. Well, I'm ready to begin the video part when you are. Just uh, you ready? Three. I am ready. Two, one, go. What? Okay. Lantern yeah. Black Lantern shirt. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, that, that just sort of said, hey, it'd be perfect, you know, it'll work with the, lantern. I just, That's like up and there's me ranting, jello. but I do Damn best. It, I hear that oh, there's no. still going to be a Green Sorry. Lantern sequel. Justice yep, League there is, it, it, there you is know, no it put enough butts in seats where they could justify it, so. You know, I did not dislike that wow. movie, I mean, it, it, I, I was, the thing is, I wasn't expecting it to be like a, like a John William, not John Williams, like a... Like a um, you know classic Superman the movie uh-huh. kind of deal. I was expecting just to enjoy myself. Really, the problem was that Parallax. They should they should have saved him for like the end of the trilogy. That and, and Ryan Ryan's more of a Kyle than a Hal. I'm sorry, he's more of a Kyle than a Hal. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds, he's just fair enough. But I enjoyed it, and I I don't know why people said like it was confused. No like like the mythos were confusing. It seemed they, I think they explained everything pretty well, actually. You're saying words, but all yeah, I hear it's it's kind of straightforward. Guy mixed up with the ring works for alien saves the universe. Yeah, it's, it's not really that difficult a concept to, to wrap your head around. Though though there were just the little things here and there that weren't really necessary. Like uh, like they're intergalactic space cops. Do they need Last masks century. to protect their identities? <laughs> oh, here's the old joke. People liked the old You're joke. Old. Yeah, that kind of makes I me sad. Because you are old, Nash. But then again, I I like I am old now example. too, considering some of the stuff that I remember <laughs> and I used to do as a kid. Yeah, I remember. I actually remember when this was. You know, when they Comic were talking about when they were muttering about doing this. I remember so the, the chatter me, about the TV show, and then nothing happened, and then I started seeing it at conventions. And that's, the, that's where the conventions joke comes from, because the, you could you not go through ass. a sci-fi convention no. without no, passing no. by a stall that had this sure? playing somewhere with a bootleg of it. Yes. You couldn't. I'm very and sure. I had not known about it. I had heard about it only just like a few years ago, and my creepy smile... <laughs> I think I gave you a couple of different creepy smiles to work with. You did. You gave me like you gave me like two or three different takes on yeah, stuff, fine. which Stop was it's good. Like it, it gave me some flexibility. I you, you I, I, God bless Film Brain. He when he gives you a cameo, just to give you a comparison, he gave me like five takes of everything, everything. Oh yeah, the, the leaping out of the way jokes. Yep. 
Uh, the one disappointment I have with this entire crossover is that you have this wonderful, glorious sound system and you know microphone in front of your face. Uh, my, I just have my office, which is nice and echoey, so of course the sound discontinuity is kind of weird. I do, I do my best to fix that. I go in uh, with uh, with audition and I try to uh, do some noise cleanup, and I did a good job of it. I cleaned it up, but you know it's. I am talking to a $200 microphone, so... I need a boom mic. Oh, <laughs> uh, this... Alright, what? I forget the actor's name, but... Everything... Is he ever in anything when he's not the villain? See, he's one of those actors that I feel like I should recognize him, yeah, but I really he's, don't. He's, he's in, like, everything, and every time I see him, I'm like... He's, yeah, he's the bad guy. But you just saw, like, fuck, he's the bad guy. But why? What is this thing right here that they are doing with these, uh, with these candid interviews? It, it, it completely boggles the mind. I know! This could actually have been a decent series. Not, like, anything, like, spectacular or wonderful or interesting. But then they have these interview segments that make absolutely no sense and completely screw up the tone of the series. Yeah, it's it's just like who I still who are they talking to? Who could they possibly be telling off screen their secret identities in this interview? So it's like you know the real world or something. And this came out several years before the first episode of the real world, which makes it even weirder because they weren't. Vamping they were going for reality TV. Right. Because that, really is the flash. that didn't yeah, exist yet. After losing his job. Tell it to somebody who cares. It's just, it just is really baffling with a lot of this stuff. Yeah, this, 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 some of the creative decisions they made. I mean, especially Barry, because that's Literally. not Barry Allen. I mean... See what... What uh, books did, did, did they read? Oh, no, they didn't read any of the books. Of course they didn't read any of the books. Yeah, first one on record. I mean, heck, CBS had just a few years before made a Flash series with Barry Allen. Mm. And they got it right. It was, you know, it was campy. It was, you know, a little funny. But they got Barry Allen, police, you know, the forensics technologist, you know, they got all that right. I never watched that. I only saw ads for it on the Sci-Fi Channel back in the day when I watched MST3K. Oh, see, I saw it when CBS aired it. I was, I was young, but I still, it was, it was not bad. It was kind of goofy and oh, the opera bit. Ow. And. Uh, Guy Gardner, kind of, sort of, not at all. Was Guy Gardner. Th there is no, uh, the thing is, there is no I Green Lantern so. that corresponds but to the character the in this Guy movie. Gardner is loud not Guy, and not angry Kyle, and not Hal, not John. Ginger. None of them this correspond the to this character. I think, in terms of personality, so you might be able to, 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 to kind of, what's the word? Uh, correlate him closer to Kyle. But Kyle had didn't yes. exist yet. Yeah. <laughs> when this came out, this is well before uh, the end of the world. And, uh, the, uh, before, before Parallax. Right. This is before Kyle. So what were they drawing on here? Guy Gardner, loud, abrasive, in your face. He'd just be like, yeah, baby, I'm, I'm Guy Gardner. I am awesome just because I'm Guy Gardner. <laughs> You should be privileged to be out with me. But no. Fire! Fire is probably the closest they got, but I don't remember her being a model. But then again, I was never big into the original JLI. Oh, the banana. I love that joke. <laughs> it was there! That was the... L quite literally, no pun intended, low-hanging fruit. It was right there. What are they shooting anyway? Like a fruit of the loom ad? They, they, they never. I don't think they really say. It's just an audition for something, and and this guy, th th this was such a tremendous failure. He was meant to be sort of romantic and nice and a good, but everything he does comes off as creepier and creepier. Like stalking her and setting up fake auditions and showing up outside of her house knowing all these details about her and it's just creepy. And part of the problem also with him is that actor. I don't think I've seen, I don't know his name, I don't think I've seen that actor in a single thing that I actually liked him in. 
Yeah, he's in numbers right now. He's in kind of he's he's kind of kind of the actor who like uh, is supposed to be semi charming. He's got kind of a New York accent going yeah. on sometimes. But he doesn't really fit any part of seen him in, and he really doesn't work here. <laughs> The woman taking her kid out in the hurricane. And of course, the biggest disappointment in all this, the special effects are actually really decent in this. They are! I know, if, even for the day, the special effects, they spent money on this, you know? it's ch See, check that out, that that cutting through the, the, uh, the stone effect, that's not bad. The Green Lantern stuff is really well done. Hmm. Adam! The, it's early so CGI, much. you know, it's, it's early mid-90s, early 90s CGI, because you can see right here the thing, and... It's, for me, it's more the obvious green screen putting them in <laughs> into the smaller <laughs> things. The, the Adam is a tough enough hero to try to pull off. Flash was decent. So yeah, it's not really difficult to make a blur. Yeah. And now the Justice League leap into finding the culprit. Uh, then again, like so many superheroes, I feel the need to bulk them up. I don't know why. I know, right? What the, that? What is he? <sighs> that costume, it just looks grotesque. It looks a flash for crying out loud. He's not supposed to look like, you know, over muscly. He's supposed to be lean and slim and fast. Unless he's got a layer of Kevlar in there, but still. And the Adam with that stupid, uh... That belt. Uh, ...had football thing the on. The football is for me as for you guys. Oh, in this scene, the Flash is complaining that he can't do anything but be fast. Oh, for crying out loud, do you know how many comic writers complain about having to write the Flash? Because being super fast means that he can do a lot of stuff that everyone else can't. And yet here we have the character saying, I can't do anything. I just run really fast. Vibrate through walls, read and retire. Or was that that uh um what's it, uh, Kid Flash? He read everything, could retain all the knowledge. But well, the, in fairness, Kid Flash that was actually uh, with the impulse that was actually surprising to them because apparently for everyone else they couldn't retain the information. Yeah. But still, you know, super speeds got it for on this. A bottle of water falls on a device. Superpower. No, it would just break the device. It's water. It's not. It's just. It's water. It would break it. But even then, it's just. It, I don't. I don't mind like you know accident causing superpowers, but it's just so bizarre that uh, that uh, that they chose that way to give her superpowers. Yeah. And not only that, the the uh, the background for ice completely different. Yeah. And yeah, this Ray Palmer cannot fix a television set. And again, the big problem with the with the weird conflicting tone of this show. Yeah. Is it supposed to be a comedy? Is it supposed to be like action adventure? Is it supposed to be the real world? What is the point of the series? This is like three different series mashed together, stirred up, and then poured onto the screen for us. Yeah, they spend more time focusing on the interpersonal nonsense going on between the Justice League characters than they do on this plot that they're setting up that's supposed to be such a big deal. And it just I can't remember, what was it about ice that caused them to realize, dun dun dun, she must be responsible? Uh, she say, well, she used her weather powers to save a guy who got frozen in the lake, and it was on TV that the lake froze, so they saw this and so they kidnapped her. They, they they kidnapped her out of bed with, with knockout gas and brought her to the spaceship. I, uh. Our heroes, everyone! <laughs> and this, this just, I, I don't know what they were thinking here. You know, for a guy Gardner costume, man. though, that doesn't look too bad. For, yeah, for a guy, Isn't the costume's right. It's just character personality wrong. is yeah. completely all over the place. But that does look like guy's costume. I'll give him that. And fire is probably the best you're going to get without having to try to make it into a human torch kind of thing. Yeah. The Weatherman. 
or for that matter, why though, again, jail as you point like out, Dr. it's just Destiny makeup up and the guy should have been able to identify her instantly. <laughs> that, that's what killed me. You know, it's she's just got different color makeup on her face, not even her whole face. It's just like really insane eyeshadow going on. Mm. And they thought this constitutes, you know, <laughs> Starfish Hitler. Yeah. Oh, Starfish Hitler. I'll shut up now. <laughs> They would have done that with Star Wars. You know they would. Oh yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Oh okay. I we I didn't quite get this uh, this across properly in the review, and I should have. At this point, this isn't the villain. This is actually the Martian Manhunter pretending to be the villain, trying to get some information. Turn into the Hulk now. Excuse me. And when he goes outside later, right here, when his hand turns green, that's that's him. He can only hold a human shape for an hour. In this. And cough, that. anamorphs, cough. And this guy, this guy back again, he's just, he's, he's creeping like crazy. And he clearly, he looks like he's 15. Yeah. And you're looking for that perfect someone, a soulmate. So that, that just adds a whole new element to the creepiness. How do you know that? Yeah. Yeah, this this, this is kind of the guy I expect to see stalking people at cons and stuff. I hate saying that, but it does happen. Um, and again, here's another one of those. How do you know not know it's them? This whole deal with with Guy Gardner and, and, and his girl girlfriend or whatever is going on here. Ping pong balls. Oh, it, it, oh. I mean, even at least in the Green Lantern movie, they he, he his voice actually like altered. Yeah, this no, it's it's just uh, you know, same it's exactly the same. Yep, face is the same. And there's Flash in the background explaining exactly what we're seeing on the screen. I mean, I know you can make you can make fun. I know getting making fun of Christian Bale's Batman voice is like the norm these days. But you know, at least he's trying to hide his voice. Yeah, he's trying to disguise it. He's he's not just go you know the same voice. Michael Keaton didn't do a whole lot of disguising on the Batman voice. Then again, that's because Michael Keaton's Batman didn't talk all that much, and even when he did, uh, he did do kind of a slightly lower pitch to it. I now return you to your regularly scheduled program. Apparently the team but, you know, Alfred would let anybody into the freaking Batcave, so Michael Keaton, so, you know, it didn't really matter. I love the static channel. <laughs> yeah. It talks through the... Should have done a poltergeist joke there, but it just didn't work. Oh, this, to me, is the absolute part where, it, where everything gets ridiculous and really makes you wonder what... The hell were they thinking? They're in this desperate situation. We need to get this information. Let's stop for okay, a second. The, the, the freaking limbo. Way to make that scene make sense. I just, <sighs> that was it. They, that was not only in the uh, script. The they they had music specially set up. You know, with the metal drums and everything. Oh, there's me hitting myself in the head. Again. Oh, it worked the that at that only worked. And limbo. No, still stupid. <laughs> I, I had a I had a lot of trouble hitting myself while not actually because that is a rubber mallet, but that still hurts if you clock yourself with it. Well, it's because rubber mallets are supposed to still be hard, just right. because less of a kind of. <laughs> I like Mook. <laughs> 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 Don't know where I come up with things like that. There's something wrong with me. Oh God! And that Adam joke. I just remember the the parts of me don't always go back to normal size. What? Why? Why would you ever bring that up? I know. It's not good comedy. This is still supposed to be treated seriously. Or is it? We can't tell. They, they don't know if this is supposed to be funny or... Because there are parts in it where things are deadly serious. And, you know, like this. This scene here coming up. There's no comedy here. There's no funny bits in this entire sequence. So... 
It's called a tone, for God's sakes. Pick one. Well, I also gotta love the green screen technology of the weatherman who can, you know, project these false images over a moving person. I know he could have he could have made billions in video games if he had that technology in the early nineties. But no he wants to use the I think that's more impressive than the weather technology personally. Frankly the weather technology already is something that could easily be sold both for for weapons research or just for general scientific patenting for uh, uh you know, if you can control the weather over like farmland that would be perfect yeah it obviously already works to some extent maybe there are some bugs that need to be worked out but it obviously already works it's enough to get a grant so why is he holding the city hostage that's the problem with a lot of supervillains. in fact i think i bring this up in the uh in uh, the Lex Luthor, Lex Luthor thing in one of my Tandy Computer Whiz Kids reviews yeah. because, let's face it, becoming a supervillain when you have the kind of technology and power available to you is dumb. It only makes sense if you if like your powers have like a limited uh, uh, capability and and you don't necessarily want to sell them if you want to just have the power for yourself. If you're already kind of psychotic, that makes sense. But when you have the weather technology, and he seems pretty stable, he's able to to, to still run the news station. Yeah, he doesn't seem like you know all that evil. He he just. Kind of smarmy a little bit. Oh, Green Lantern. I mean, yeah, Green Lantern. Mar Martian Manhunter. Oh, good Lord, have mercy. Everybody's beefy in these costumes, in these costumes and Martian Manhunter is especially. Well, like, David Ogden Stiers is a bit of a large gentleman to begin with. And he, yeah, he, you know, we've never seen Martian Manhunter chunky. I know he likes the cookies and whatnot, but. That people actually didn't get the. We know what I, I guess we know what happened to the rest of the Green Martians. He ate them. People didn't get that. What's he talking about? Because hardly anybody knows who Green uh, Martian Man. Hardly anybody knows his origin and whatnot. Well, for you kids who don't know, the entire Martian race is dead except for him. Yeah, Martian Manhunter is essentially Martian Superman. About the same backstory. But has, but at least is closer to Earth, and at least has a uh, you know wider array, wider array of superpowers, and doesn't look human, just humanoid. Oh, did, how would you not look at that? Look at that. He's wearing too. What is he wearing? I don't know. What is that shirt he has on? They they never he apparently waited until the next day to to tell him because he did change clothes. Because when he figured it out, he was wearing a completely different shirt. He's got like a t-shirt and then this wide v-neck or I wouldn't even call it a v-neck. It's like a heck, it's like a, a trapezoid neck. Yeah. I've never seen anyone in my life dressed like that. Was that something I missed in the 90s? with your powers. That's like one of those, you know, bizarre futuristic kind of clothes <laughs> on uh, on some like 1950s science fiction program trying to predict what clothes would be like in the future. And failing. Sense in this movie. <laughs> 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 Martian collar is huge. I know. It looks like he's he's part Time Lord or something. <laughs> At least the Time Lords, you know, huge things. They like kind of swooped back behind so you could they could still turn their heads. Yeah, he can't. He has no peripheral vision at all in that outfit. Using the same trick the TV repairman did. Chewing gum. The and then now, now it's a juicy fruit. They, they, they went this far for that joke. So it's off to for gum to save the day. Hooray! <laughs> Can't look at this without laughing. They use the wrong music there. Oh no, he could. If only he could fly. Uh, makes a helicopter with with the, makes it. Oh boy. I don't think the flight effect is all that bad, but then again, it, it, but just showing it then brings about the same question as, as you say, just like, oh, it's bad, too bad he can't fly. <laughs> and yeah, he makes a chainsaw with, with, <sighs> and here it comes, and it's not that far, heck, I could crawl, oh, I could walk down there. 
and pick up the box. I don't even need to fly. It's not like it was that tall of a cliff. Not to mention, uh, Flash could actually stop the, uh, the tidal wave, too. Hey, stop the tornado earlier. He could probably stop a tidal wave. So, welcome to our home apartment thingy. Oh, and this. Just happens to have a- no one checked him for this. No. He just got even in. If he didn't, even if he just like on the way out, they haven't had a chance to check for all his stuff. But you know, just such a tiny little laser. Oh, well, it's convenient that it's shaped just a way that I can use it to cut my manacles. <laughs> Look like you know, like pimp bling going on there. <laughs> I swear you people, this thing and it just this this was such a wasted opportunity. Especially the CBS's Flash was a pretty good series. They the they Flash it wasn't the best thing they ever did, but it was pretty good. The they could have done it again with this. This could have been a winner. All right, not like this, but this could have been. That that's why I'm so frustrated with it because. At the same period in time, they were doing other adaptations that, you know, they were limited by budget effects, but they were doing decent stuff, and that, that's why this was frustrating. Uh, but what you gonna do? As for a live-action Justice League suit movie, eh, I, I think they I think they might be going about it the wrong way by trying to go this, the Marvel route. The problem is, the reason why Marvel can pull it off is because they own their own movie studio. They can do this kind of thing. It doesn't quite work as well when you have when DC's owned by a parent company that you know tends to screw around with stuff. Yeah, not to mention, in order to get it to work, they are going to have to reboot Batman again. Plus the new Superman movie, plus other movies to line up the other heroes, and then the JLA movie. Mm. Oh yeah, and for people who don't get that joke at the end, uh, I disagree <laughs> with Nash. I think Time and the Ronnie is actually a decent start to the Seventh Doctor's run. I, <laughs> certainly a lot worse than others were, but oh well. Difference of opinion. It was silly. It's exceedingly silly. Was not. We've seen a lot sillier. I mean, look, at least it didn't feature limboing under okay. the laser. <laughs> yeah. Limboed under the laser. God. Campy, silly crap. <sighs> All right. Well, thank you, Lewis, for this. I appreciate it. No problem. And thank you all for joining us for taking a look back at this awful, 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 awful pilot. <laughs> and I will point out... The Wonder Woman pilot has leaked. I know. I've I've read full synopses about what happens in it. I don't I'm know. Still thinking about whether or not I want to do a review <laughs> on it because I'm sure it would just be the word "why" repeated over and over and over <laughs> with a pipe. Flat out murder a guy with a pipe. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's what I think of when I think Wonder Woman: murdering people yeah. with a pipe. You know, Wonder Woman, she's killed before. I mean, she it's not her first resort, but she, like, she ripped, she, like, cut a Medusa's head off. <laughs> she killed Maxwell Lord, but they were extenuating circumstances, and they were, like, super-powered beings. Not just straight up throw a pipe through a guy. <laughs> God! <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Well, I think that that wraps us up. Thank you for watching, Lewis. Thank you for recording this with me. I appreciate it. No problem. Thank you, sir. And see you guys later.